Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we have a very special video covering an NFT project launched on the Ethereum chain and we're going to go over the entire project with yours truly again, OVO Sounds ETH. How we doing, bro? What's going on? Thanks for having me back. Hey, always a pleasure to have you on the channel, man. Pleasure to be back on talking NFTs, Ethereum, the deal absolutely guys but before we jump right into the video what's really going to help this video actually get out to more people like you is tossing a quick like and uh subscribing because then we can spread the knowledge of nfts with uh, a larger audience so i would appreciate that but we're going to get right into it and g take it away what exactly is house of warlords so the house of warlords nft is a as i said an nft project it's off of like kind of Japanese uh, samurai, as you can see by the PFPs right there. But the interesting part about this project is every trait you see is hand drawn by the tattoo artist El Punkero, who's also based somewhere out of Asia. Okay, excellent. That's really cool. Uh, yeah, let's go a little bit farther into it. So we know, uh, at least uh, we've been talking about this. So El Punkero is a tattoo artist and he spent some of his time individually hand drawing all these designs what's so special about um the designs like in terms of like the metadata that you see in each of these individual uh nft projects or single nfts in this project so for most profile picture projects or pfp projects that we've seen in the space a lot of them are tend to be looking either at you or in a direction facing like left or right but for these traits since they are transferable you have to imagine that like you can't really transfer a trait that's looking straight on to something that's looking left. So what El Punkero had to do was he had to take these traits and draw them at different angles, whether that be a 45 degree angle, a 90 degree angle, a 60 degree angle. So yes, there are a thousand plus traits, but they had to be drawn different times depending on which way the PFP was facing. So they, these traits you could easily say are maybe in like the and then 20 plus thousand traits if you look at it that way nothing but respect for el poncaro i'm actually going to put his twitter somewhere on this page maybe like down below here or above above g uh just because like i don't even know the guy honestly trust me like it's not like he ever asked me to shout him out i've never talked to the guy but um just learning about him and what he's done i think he deserves a shout out he's on twitter i'm going to link that down there so you guys should just follow him up but that being said um yeah, what more What more do we know about the, the project, G? <clears throat> so, as we can see on this page, they say on-chain properties, ultra deflation, compatibility tech, tokenomics, and 1,000 plus traits. What I like here most is the, the deflation, and their deflationary event is called Sabuku, because most people in the NFT space are neither new to NFTs or new to crypto, so they really won't understand like what a deflationary event is if you're not an economist or like, you just don't haven't been around crypto. But they kind of make it fun and turn it into seppuku, which is kind of a relevant event and also fun for you to take part in. Fun for us, for people who know like what the you know the true meaning of deflationary is, and we know that's a good thing. But it can be a little scary, like hearing words like deflationary and like burning. Um, especially to people who are new to crypto and entering the space and aren't familiar with the terminology and are just, you know, drawn away or are pulled away by, by these um, intimidating yet good words. Yeah, <clears throat> excuse me. And then the compositability tech, that's just, I think that's the first of its kind, honest, honestly, in the NFT space, because what that means is you can take traits from one NFT and transfer them to another, and that happens through the Seppuku event. So they did a great job of tying the deflationary event with compositability tech, which is what I think to be first of its kind. What other event did they have? They had something recently. So like once you mentioned the pro. By the way, me and G. Uh, shout out to G. Actually, uh, G got onto the whitelist for uh, for minting the uh, the first um, House of Warlords that we got, and uh, he talked to me about it and got me uh, to take a spot off the whitelist. So I was able to mint one myself. But tell me more about that other event they had. So for everyone who was holding an NFT uh, that was minted through the whitelist or even just in, in regular at the regular sale, um, what was that? Uh, what did they have to offer to all the holders? So for, <clears throat> excuse me, so for anyone who had an NFT and didn't 
listed or I think it was maybe listed at a certain price or maybe if you just held it from the day that you minted it, they basically rewarded everyone with a free mint to give to someone else as a Christmas gift. So you could see that as someone's entry into the NFT space or you could just gift it to someone else who you know in the NFT space and be like, hey, Merry Christmas, here's a voucher for an NFT. And honestly, they did not have to do it all. That was just a extra gift for us from the team. And I thought that was really cool of them to do. Seeing that there's going to be like real utility coming back into this project. That was a pretty cool thing for the team to do, giving away a free NFT for holding that, um, for holding it and not listing it on OpenSea. Yeah, absolutely. Shows that they value their holders and they, you know, they. Yeah. And here you can really get a better sense of how the, the traits really have to be as they even say here, painstakingly hand-drawn, because you can see some of them are looking at you, some of them are looking slightly left, some of them are looking slightly more left, some of them are looking completely left, and like all those traits, if you choose to fuse them or like combine them, you just have to be able to be transferable. Yeah, absolutely. You, know, you can imagine how much time that took for El Poncaro to just go through each individual one. Unbelievable. But yeah, it looks like yeah. we're at the seppuku thing over here. So why don't we just go over that a little bit? Yeah, so basically this is a monthly deflationary event and committing seppuku requires you to burn one of your warlords and doing so you get 1,000 soul token. It gives you a 50% to get a new NFT from a better house and you can transfer the gear from one warlord to another. It's pretty cool. So the warlord dies himself, but the trace that he's carrying get transferred onto the next nft yeah so basically what you're trying to do is you're trying to transfer the rare trace from one nft to another to try to make an even rarer nft in the hopes that its price is valued at more on the floor so the metadata or what we call in the nft space i guess a lot of people call it trades uh i'm more newer to the nft space the less technical way to say it is trades so the traits get upgraded and then that single nft becomes more rare eg more valuable and then you can sell it for more also really quickly where can you pick up one of these uh where do you buy them you can get them off of open seas the whole thing about the burning in nft is cool because ultimately you're lowering the supply which in turn should make the floor price go up but the fact that they added even more incentives to burn like giving you a thousand soul token <laughs> plan to implement a lot into the soul token like in real in real life events tied to that so maybe you can pay some soul token to get to a red sox game a celtics game something like that and then they even have maybe merchandise shop that's coming out or you could just buy more traits for your warlord to just look sick and flex as your pfp is soul listed on coin market cap soul is not listed yet but they have plans to list it sometime within 2022 and i'm hoping that's quarter one 2022 that's good it shows it goes to show that they're taking the project seriously yeah for sure they're they're big tech nerds as they like to call themselves as you will see later on in the website but they seem to be working on it excellent so this is just saying that fortune favors the bold so when you do burn your nft you have a 50 percent chance of getting another nft which is going to be even rarer than the one you burnt because it comes from a secret house that can only be obtained by burning an nft Increasing the rarity, increasing the price. Token, obviously, which can be gained from Sepuku or staking, which they like to call conquest. <clears throat> and with that, you can get new trades, you can get merge, you'll be able to do maybe in real life experience, so on and so forth, whatever they plan to do with the soul token. And then ultimately, when it is listed, there's probably going to be a liquidity pool. So if it's worth something, you might even be able to swap out into ETH or something like that. Interesting. So it will be an ERC20 token. Yes, it will. This is just their roadmap. I'm not going to go too in-depth about that. That's more of a do-your-own-research type of thing. All right. For their team, this is the only red flag I have about this project is they're not doxxed. They do drop some hints about themselves in the Discord, but for the most part, as you can see, they are just... Yes, they are House of Warlord profile pictures, but that's all they are to us. We know they are tech nerds know they know what they're doing with the development side of things but we know El Punkero has a tattoo shop and if you happen to find his tattoo shop you could very well meet him but we don't know that he knows the rest of the team or has contact with them so 
that's the only red flag I have about this project. Yeah, personally, I kind of would get pushed away by an undox team. I don't really like that too much. Um, but sometimes you got to take a risk because, you know, some of the, you know, biggest returns are going to be by taking a risk. And, um, you know, if it's a good project, if you feel confidently about it, then invest in it. If not, you know, um, find the next project to invest in. But, you know, me and G have done our research pretty thoroughly on this project. So we feel good about it. Um, none of this is financial advice, though. None of us are financial advisors. We're, uh, we're professional test dummies for everything crypto. Um, so, you know, follow, follow us along with what happens, you know, we'll keep you updated. Um, and we'll see how it goes. But yeah, of course, obviously a, a docs team gives you a better sense of security. I would like to see that. Um, but you also got to follow, like if they have like a strong discord, if they have a good community around them, um, if it doesn't just look like a whole bunch of spam, um, you know, things like that, things like that. Uh, that you know can kind of verify you know the solidity of a project yeah and one thing i do want to credit this team about doing is being there for the community and what i mean by this is they're in the discord and not just dropping announcements like they're actively in there chatting with the community they even held a space today that i would have been listening to them just talk about their plans for the project so on and so forth and some teams even though they are docs or even not docs they won't do that they don't like to be holding spaces or be actively chatting in discord and yes you are busy but there are, is some time you can take out of your day to do that and i like the fact that they do this yeah i agree it goes to show that they're trying to stay in touch with their community and they want to keep them all in the loop and stuff and keep them informed and this is a good segue into like the next part of the website because as you can see i electic i think i'm saying that right i hope i'm saying that right they're basically one of the world's largest crypto funds based out of switzerland and for them to pull <clears throat> backing from this company has to be huge, which means they call themselves tech nerds, but they're downplaying this 100%. The company would not back a project like this unless they had full faith in the team or knew the team. People behind the di dialectic team, as we see, Ryan Zer and Dean Elderman, sorry if I'm pronouncing your names wrong, but these are pretty big names in the crypto space. They've been here for a while. As you can see, Polkadot's listed there. <clears throat> So this team wouldn't have jumped on this project if they didn't have high conviction in it, which ultimately just makes me a little more bullish. And those kind of flags that I have up are starting to go down. Yeah, I mean, that's a pretty big investment firm. And, you know, you're probably looking to make the most out of your out of your money for as in, in terms of return on investment. So, you know, you can be pursuing much bigger projects. You know, this is just an early stage project right now. And to be investing into it definitely means that they have some level of conviction, if not a very strong level of conviction in the project and we can even go take a look at like electric's linkedin page their their team's docs as you can see they're on linkedin we can see they have seven employees smaller firm because yes they are in crypto but that doesn't mean they do not have the same amount of capital and maybe even more than some of these big vcs so absolutely absolutely well said. I like the fact that they're doxxed. It, it's um, it goes to show they're they're putting their you know their names on the line right there. Yeah, and another thing I like about this uh, dialectic team, separate from the House Warlords, is you can see they're crypto or NFT native because they've been in this space just by like their tags and stuff like lead blockchain engineer. You know what I'm saying? That's not something you see all over LinkedIn. People are more towards geared towards professionalism, and people see crypto kind of as like funny money, magical internet money. So to see someone putting that as like a tag and being wanting to be labeled as like a three in crypto, it's pretty cool. Well said. Yeah, no, I totally agree with that. I do like the fact that they're uh, they're representing cryptocurrency and we got a strong team behind it. Uh, I think they have a clip of Sabuku actually happening. They had a streamer doing it. Let's just show that real fast. Let's take a look. Just their Twitter page, as you can see, they don't have crazy engagement, but community does stay active on Discord and they do interact with the tweets sometimes from here and there. Like the cool stuff gets cool engagement, like this clip of El Punk, or El Punk Arrow on one of the trades. Like, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. And speaking of um, interacting with your Twitter crowd, uh, me and G are probably planning on kind of 
casually putting out some Twitter spaces that you can join. We can talk NFTs. We can talk about DeFi. We can talk about a lot of exciting things. So keep posted on that. We'll probably make announcements when we're going to go live, either on our Twitter ahead of time or maybe even like on a YouTube video or something. We can disclose when we're going to do that. But other than that, so what are we looking at right now, G? We're basically just watching uh, this streamer. He's basically burning an NFT. He's selecting which one he'd like to burn. He's selecting the traits that he wants to send over. And as you can see on the bottom, the, those, those are the two NFTs. One's getting burned, one's getting the traits. And he's selecting which traits are going over. And he's going to confirm. It's a seppuku, pay the, the gas for it. Those are the traits that he now gets. And he gets that new NFT, which the time you burn an NFT, you get plus one honor. And then that goes up. I think it's to honor eight. And for the more honor you have, you get more soul token when you stake your NFT or as they like to call it conquest. Interesting. So it not only increases the value of the NFT, but it increases the amount of passive income you're making as well. Yes. Awesome. So this is also like a sneaky little passive income play too. Nice. Always like to see that. Always like to make some extra money while you're uh, while you're resting. Oh yeah, G's gonna. It looks like G's gonna show you. Uh, this is just the general interface. If you do have a house, <clears throat> a house warlord, as they like to call them, house. So as you can see, I have one here, and this is my how number two five six five, and it belongs to the house. Each NFT has a house. In stake, I haven't staked mine because I'm waiting. The Sapuku event is live. It's live for two weeks, so I could enter the event now and commit Sapuku, but I do not have a second NFT, as you see. So I'm waiting to get one and then do that and obviously stake because I have some high conviction in this project. And then you could just link that all to your MetaMask so then that the the, uh, the soul token just strictly goes straight there? Yep, yeah. Everything's done right here through this. This is a Web3 application, so it's everything's going to be able to be done here and you can just withdraw straight to your metamask so you can just put your arms behind your head and kind of just passively make income as you're chilling yeah pretty much interesting but um i think the people are here for uh price predictions too what do you think g what do we got what do we got for price predictions near term talking 2022 and let's say five years down the line let's go look at the floor right now just so i can a better basis all right we got a 0.05 floor first the puku still going until the 31st so 10 more days i'm gonna say by 2022 or i'd like to see like a 0 0.0 0 0.06 i don't like to see crazy price action i have high conviction i don't mind holding for all the spookus i think that's fun End of 2022, with all the seppukus happening and all that, I think the price could maybe hit like 0.8, closer to an ETH. Not to put you on the spot though, but if, if crypto continues into the uh, the bull cycle and let's say Ethereum shoots up to what some people predict uh, in the most bull case of like 12,000, 13,000, do you think that uh, each warlord will hold up or do you think we're looking at a, a lower price? I think the team's going to do a good job and holding the value with the price of ETH going up. But yeah, I think they'll be able to hold that. Awesome. Um, you know, I'm, I'm kind of similar on the same page with you just because I have a lot of conviction with the team, really a lot. When I have strong faith in a team, that's really when I want to invest into a project. Like I don't like to invest in the hype as much as some people do because people say, oh, this project will go crazy. More so like the team has sold me on this project like El Poncaro, the amount of effort he puts into it, and then just how dedicated the team is. So, you know, if they can scale the project with uh, with the price going up, I mean, I'm kind of on the same page with you. I'd say closer to half an ETH would be like my my uh, kind of like my best best case. I'd say half an ETH point six. Uh, but you know, I'm more newer to the NFT space, so you know, I I, I would I would trust G's expert opinion more than me he's definitely helping me learn a lot more about nfts but um yeah as, as for the value of you know what they have to offer and what their vision is i i could rest comfortably saying like 0 0.5 0 0.6 ETH. yeah that's a big thing i'm looking for when i'm jumping into projects i want to see teams that i can one trust and then i want to see a community that i can get behind that i like to be a part of so that's why i like to go into the discord and a couple levels or whatever maybe i get whitelist maybe i don't but if i by that time 
fact that I think I like the community, I'll stay. And even if I don't get whitelist, I'll try to scoop off the secondary or maybe when they're publicly minting. Can we see the Discord and see how active they are? All right, man. So, yeah, walk us through. What are we looking at? So, this is just their official links. This is really helpful if you want to, like, just go to their websites, their OpenSea. They have PFP and art, rarity tools, smart contract, all the stuff that you basically need. And this is very helpful for beginners and people that are new to the NFT space because you're going to get a lot of random accounts that look exactly like the House of Warlords Discord sending you links to secret mints or exclusive whatever and they're all going to be fake and they're just trying to scam you so look out for those only go into that score that you initially signed up for and go into their official link page when when it is time to mint or when you do want to get off the secondary and go to their official link page because you do not want to get scammed and wake up and have all your funds gone and no admins admins are ever going to message you directly right no, so don't fall for any of that stuff, guys. Trust me, a lot, a lot of scammers out there. So always stay, always stay cautious. Yeah, but as you can see, they just have a bunch of cool servers set up. They have international servers. They got stuff like if you like animes, book, coders, gyms, gamers corner, tattoos, flex. Because obviously, these the PFPs were dis designed by tattoo artists. So we have a huge tattoo community, and then like Show Alley. They also just have like audios if you want to just chill and listen to some lo-fi and like a music lounge. They have some cool stuff that they do daily questions. And they're just doing this for the community just, just to keep them entertained. Oh yeah, for sure. This is all like made by the team, created to just like kind of keep people having fun and staying in the community. Absolutely. I mean, when you're doing so much for your community, it just goes to show how much you actually care for them because they're not just in it for the money, you know? Yeah, I can't show you the main chat for the holders because there is some sensitive information in there, but I think we can go into general chat. Not even showing up for me here with a general. You guys, you can see some people who don't even have House of Warlords are just still just in here talking, getting a feel for the community and seeing how they feel and stuff like that, which is always good to see outside people coming in, asking questions. And then you see the regular day people that are always in the community answering like, hey, this is a great community. This is what's happening. This is how I feel about it. Yada, yada, yada. And then that just attracts people to come in and be like, OK, you know what? Maybe I am going to grab one today. All right, guys. So, yeah, that's going to do it. I hope you guys got a good understanding of what House of Warlords is. I uh, hope you got a good overview. I think G did a phenomenal job explaining to you a lot of the aspects that go into play. Um, G, thanks again for coming on uh, on my channel. I really appreciate every time you do. And you always uh, throw out some great knowledge for everyone, you know, to hear. Thanks for having me on. I love talking to NFTs. So we're going to cut this episode here, but don't forget to sub to G. His uh, link for his YouTube channel and all of his other stuff is down below. Uh, sub if you're new to this channel. Toss me a like. Follow me down on social. And guys, if you want to talk more NFTs in the future, we're going to be reviewing a lot of products, uh, <laughs> a lot of projects. Um, so and if you want to stay up to date with newer ones, too, following us each on Twitter would uh, help you, you know, know when the next videos are coming. Uh, but that's all I got for this one. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the very next video. <laughs> that was a pretty cool thing. Nope.